In my first video, I asked people to dig more ponds. Unfortunately, I don't have a garden, but I want to show you the fascinating worlds hidden just below the surface. So I made one in my basement. In January, I bought a second-hand aquarium online and began documenting the process of fitting it with a waterfall and a planted backboard. I made the foundation of the backboard out of styrofoam to keep it lightweight, and began by trying out different pieces together. Once I thought I could cover the back, I began carving the styrofoam into shape with a knife and saw. I glued things together with hot glue and roughed the surfaces up in preparation for coating them with cement, which made a huge mess. Starting with a thin mixture of cement, I painted on the first coat. After drying overnight, I painted on a second layer, this time with a thicker mixture. After drying for another two nights, I checked whether everything still fit in the tank snugly. At this stage I had to move and say goodbye to my housemate's cat. But my parents were kind enough to let me set up in their basement, which I promptly overran. I then went out and collected rocks and sand to cover the backboard and achieve a better look. I prepared the rocks by cleaning them and laying them out to dry. When they're dry, the rocks can easily be attached with silicone. I was careful to choose this brand of silicone because it doesn't contain fungicides and won't pose a threat to any aquatic life once it's set. Luckily for me, it was also the cheaper option. For the waterfall, I was able to find some nice slate stones. I layered the rock to imitate how this stone looks in the natural world. I started getting worried about how heavy things were getting, so I covered the rest of the surfaces with silicone and sand. Applying the sand generously and gently applying pressure helps create a seamless transition between the rocks. I let everything dry before shaking and brushing off the excess sand. I'll plant succulents on the left and have the waterfall on the right fed by the pump. It was then time to prepare the tank, as I had not yet cleaned it. I removed the heater and the filter sponges, as I will be using mosses instead, and the native freshwater organisms I plan on showing you won't require any heating. I then cleaned the tank with a mixture of water and vinegar, because using something like bleach could leave harmful residues. Before putting in the backboard, I made an egg crate floor to spread out its weight. Since the backboard is made of styrofoam, it had to be glued to the bottom of the tank to stop it floating. Since this step is virtually impossible to undo, I made sure everything fit before fixing anything in permanently. I glued the floor in first, and then generously applied silicone to the bottom, placing the backboard on top. I let this set for seven days. Once it had set, I began building up the floor with sand. I made the first layer with waste sand from a previous project, and covered that layer with wet stream sediment. The roots were secured with superglue, which cures and becomes inert, similar to the silicone. For the succulents, I prepared a bed of well-draining, gravelly substrate. I also planted some of the smaller ones between the slate stones to find out where they do best. I like to spray everything down a bit too, so there isn't too much dust. I've been keeping a box of various mosses for this project that I collected outside.
I'm not sure what mosses I got, but I think this one is called button moss. Since I'll be watering and misting the top regularly, I decided to add some lichen as accents. I super glued them so they wouldn't roll around. I also found this funny thing that I think is called a pixie cup lichen. I'm hoping it will also thrive just here in the corner. I had some more mosses that tend to grow on damp wood, so I arranged them around the waterfall where they would get enough moisture. I added some ferns for extra variety. These guys are often found growing between rocks and in dry walls, so I think that they'll do well in the corner here. The aquatic plants were sourced from various public ponds in my neighbourhood, where I also helped some bees. After a few last shots, I got a hand lifting everything onto the shelf and finished filling the aquarium with water from the pond. Once the water settled and cleared up, you could already see my red pond snail. I'd like to get every freshwater snail native to Switzerland. And here it is a week later, now that everything's settled in and had a chance to grow out a little. I added a couple more plants in the meantime, and it's already teeming with life. I introduced two large snails, a red Great Ramshorn Pond Snail, and a Lister's River Snail. A lot of stowaways also showed up. Here are what I think are some bladder snails, but they're very small. There were also some small ramshorn pond snails. I spotted one here on a leaf with a black bump. I noticed a couple of black bumps, and I was wondering what they might be. I found one on the glass after a while, so they were definitely moving around. Eventually I caught one on the move. They're little black flatworms called Polycellus nigra. I love how they glide around while they explore. There were also a few bugs in the plants. I think that they might have arrived as eggs because they only showed up after about two weeks. Unfortunately, the other small arthropods are quite fast and difficult to catch on camera. Here's some kind of short water boatman that I couldn't identify. Please let me know in the comments if you recognize it. I caught him hitching a ride on a pond snail. There's a rather frantic velvet water mite that's equally hard to capture, barely ever taking a break. I noticed a small caddisfly larva as well, and this funny dancing grub that I couldn't identify. I think this crustacean may have come in with the stream sediment. Hopefully it's not alone, and they'll be able to start a colony here. There are lots of smaller crustaceans as well. This is a Daphnia which beats its second pair of antenna to swim. There are also copepods who swim more like shrimp with their tails and legs. Thank you for watching Fond of Pond. 
I hope I've piqued your interest in pond life. If you like the video, please leave a like and press the subscribe button to see more. I have lots of plans. If I made any mistakes with the species identification, please let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see smaller updates, you can check out my Instagram.